And our God is worthy, amen? amen. Folks, that's, uh, we, actually my wife picked that purposefully as we end out this year. Our theme for last year was, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And uh, I sure hope that this year, especially as we kind of keyed in on that theme several times throughout the year, that you made that a part of your life to take that time to offer the Lord the praise that is due him for he is worthy, and it is due him. Uh, we ought to be calling upon the Lord. Take your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. While you're turning there, I did forget to mention, uh, be in prayer for the Dahlquists. Uh, they all seem to have a little bit of a stomach bug, uh, so I think they have a little too much Christmas cheer from what I gathered. So be in prayer for them that they can recover uh, here very, very quickly. Uh, so we miss them as well, and looking forward to them to being back with us here uh, uh, very, very soon. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, we have come to the very end of our series now out of Philippians, so we will be finishing this up today, and then uh, next Sunday will be our first, one of the first Sundays in January. Uh, we'll begin our new theme for the year, and you will see that next week, uh, but I believe this will be a good challenge for us this morning, as well as an encouraging message to you, I hope as well. And before I begin, I really want to just give you the title, make you chew on it here for a little bit first, which is, have we learned to be content? Have we learned to be content? Now, just think about that for a minute. You'll already know where I'm going with this when you see these scriptures when we read them, uh, but I do think this should be profitable uh, for you and I. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye also, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I res re speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever stead I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with me my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also... That in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren which are, with, which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Have you learned to be content? What a year we have had. Amen. What a year we have had. Who would have ever thought we'd see a year like we've had. When we consider navigating through this year, when we consider navigating through this virus, through COVID-19, when we consider navigating through a, really a, 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 an election year, uh, all the divisiveness that's going on in our country, even for some, just the uncertainty of even a fair election process, all of these things swirling about, right? What a year we've had. On top of all of these things, Many of you have maybe just dealt with other challenges that you faced. And all of these, when we kind of compile them together, certainly then must have an impact on our country, 
on our daily lives and even we would say in our churches. These things have had an impact. However, through all of these circumstances, we can be encouraged, I believe, through these scriptures this morning, knowing that God is in control and God has not forsaken his children. See, he's the one that's in control of all of this. And as we'll say what troubled the waters may have been, he's no less God. It's a matter of how we rely on him in our faith. Now keep in mind when I read those verses, and we've went over this many, many times, but I want to just remind you one more time where Paul is. Remember, he is in prison writing this letter. This idea that we're going to talk about this morning of have we learned to be content and then going through some other scriptures together from this passage. Keep all this in mind that Paul is in prison. And as you know, Roman imprisonment was just a brutal place. This was not a place of luxury. There was no concern for the prisoner's comfort. Right? They didn't have rec rooms. They didn't have televisions. Uh, they didn't have exercise rooms. They didn't have places to play cards. Roman imprisonment was brutal. They had no plans for meals. They had no medical care. They had no concern for a just or speedy trial. This was brutal imprisonment. Paul's imprisonment in Caesarea went on for years. He had to wait patiently for his freedom, though he'd done nothing wrong. Keep in mind, what was his crime? <laughs> Preaching the gospel of Christ. Teaching others about Jesus. Wanting people to come to a saving relationship with Christ was Paul's alleged crime. And yet we see him here in prison. He had made a personal connection with Felix, the Roman governor. We see through the scripture, they often summoned him to speak with him. And after two years of this, Felix was succeeded by uh, the governor or by Festus, the governor. But in that exchange, Felix, for whatever reason, left Paul in prison. And you can jot that down, just read it later, Acts chapter 24. Uh, read that chapter right around verse 27. We'll give you that very account, that kind of change in power. And then for whatever reason, Felix left Paul there. Paul's suffering continued. However, look at this. Look at when we see when a person like Paul and where he was being in prison, when he teaches you and I life lessons on contentment, I believe our ears ought to be opened. If we can see insight from a man like this, who has said in, in whatever state I am, whether I'm poor or rich, whether I'm naked or clothed, whether I'm hungry or full, whatever state he's in, what's he tell you and I? He's learned to be content. There ought to be some things that we then can draw from this. If he can live through such levels of agony with his life in all that he endured, Paul then through the scriptures must have something that we can learn. There must be something that he is teaching us through these. And I believe as we begin to plan and prepare for a new year, I want us to really consider uh, if we truly believe three Bible truths out of this passage. We're going to look at three things out of our scriptures this morning that you know. We, we know them well, uh, we, and, and, and I want us to move on knowing them, uh, whether it be by catchphrase or they just kind of pop quickly in our head. I want us to know them, but I also then want us to consider if we truly believe them and if we're truly then letting and applying these scriptures to our lives. Firstly, being that very thing in verses 10 through 12, do we believe we can be content. Do you really believe that? If you say, you know what, I'm not so sure. Well, we see a perfect example of scripture in Paul's life. 
And we can look back at our life and we can look back at our circumstances. And much like Paul, I believe we ought to be able as a child of God to say that very same thing he did. That we can learn to be content. Look at verse 10 one more time. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again wherein ye were also careful but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I am both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed to be both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. The word content here means to be self-sufficient, to be contented. It also has a need or, or a a definition of being satisfied. There's a satisfaction that comes with the Christian life. There's a satisfaction that comes with the right relationship with the Lord. We again see Paul from prison giving us this letter. What is he doing? I read it to you out of those three verses. What is he doing? He is rejoicing and he is in content. Now you tell me how can this be? How can this man, wondering if he's going to die that day, wondering if they will take his life tomorrow, wondering when his life will end at any moment, probably malnourished, probably not being very well taken care of, probably doesn't have shoes on his feet, let alone clothes to wear, in some dingy, rotten, musty, wet, damp, however you want to spin it, cell, he is rejoicing in saying, whatever state I am, I've learned to be content. How can that be? Because he serves a great God. Folks, he's our God today. As I look around the room, praise the Lord, none of you are naked. It's a little funny, I know. All of you have shoes on. None of you are shackled. I don't see anybody, sorry, malnutritioned. That's the way it is. Think about these things. Boy, and we get some trials, we get some things that come in our life, and we just throw our hands up. Paul says, I have learned to be content. Sadly, folks, there are too many Christians, there are too many believers, there are too many that are God's children who do not have this same attitude that Paul had. Whether it's because of the reasons I've already listed, the reasons we've already discussed that are just unique to our year, whatever it may be, they just don't seem to be content. They don't seem to be satisfied. And I believe the reason for that is because they're looking inward. They're not looking upward. They're looking at what and how these things are affecting them and not how and why and how is God going to use these things through their lives. They're not looking to the one who will take care of them. The Bible says here that we can learn to be content. I think that's important. I think this is where maybe many of us and myself included, if I want to be totally honest this morning, years ago would take this passage and say, well, you know, contentment will just come. One day, you know, as I grow spiritually and one day as I work on my Christian life and, you know, as I do some things and I'll just, you know, I'll figure it out. Listen, contentment must be learned. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be content if you're not content today. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be content if you're not working on contentment. That's what the scripture is telling us this morning. To be content doesn't just happen. Contentment is not about circumstances. It's about our attitude. Boy, and see, that's what happens sometimes, isn't it? We begin to look at all of the circumstances around us and we forget 
to examine our own attitude. Paul was content even though he was in prison. He could die at any moment. Even in the worst of circumstances, Paul found satisfaction and he found a joyful life serving the Lord. Let me challenge you this morning. Have you found this contentment? Have you learned this contentment? Do you have this kind of joy where in any circumstance you can be like Paul? One author wrote, being content is not saying, I just don't care anymore. That's not what contentment is. Contentment's not giving up. Contentment's not throwing your arms up in the air and just saying, oh, well, it'll work out one day. Contentment says, I will live fully and joyfully in whatever situation God places me in. Did you catch that this morning? Are you living fully today? Are you living joyfully today in whatever situation God has placed us in? It means trusting that God has a reason for the things that are going on in our life. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that everything we've endured this last year is for a reason? Do you really believe that God has a plan through all of this? Because I do. I absolutely believe that. Absolutely. And we'll see some of the things I believe we've already seen that he's done in our church. He has a plan to use us, to develop us through these things. You see, it's no different. Whether it's COVID, whether it's elections, whether it's disease, whether it's cancer, whether it's just bad times in general at times, God has a plan to develop each and every one of his children. Let's rest in that plan. Let's seek it. Let's know. Let's allow him to use us. We then should be able to find contentment even in the most difficult of circumstances. Have you found contentment lately? Well, I sure hope you have. And if you haven't, you need to look to your Savior. You need to look to your relationship with the Holy God because that is where contentment is. It's not within you. It's not within all the arguments in your head. It's not within all the debate that we like to debate. It's with placing your trust in the Lord that he is in control. Contentment is anchored in our trust in God, believing that he has total control of everything that takes place. That's where contentment is anchored. So the secret to contentment is realizing that in Christ, we already have the greatest blessing we could be given. We are a child of God. Are you saved this morning? Say amen. Amen. Then you ought to be content. I ought to be content. We've received the best blessing that is available to us. And on top of being his child, he then has a plan for your life and my life. Isn't that wonderful? That the God of the universe wants to use you just as much as he wants to use the person sitting next to you and just as much as he wants to use anyone in this room or anyone online, God wants to use you in a personal way. Contentment is about trusting more completely. Write that down if you take notes. Contentment is trusting more completely. We have no excuse not to. If we believe that he's the God of this universe, if if we truly believe that he is in control, if we truly believe that God has all things in his hand, if we truly believe that there is a plan, then folks, why aren't we trusting him fully and completely? It's silly not to, isn't it? It just doesn't make sense then to try to fix it ourselves. It doesn't make sense then to try to do it in our own strength. It is taking God at his word. I believe that's what Paul learned to do. It's about relying on God's character. Learn to be content in any circumstance, knowing that God's work is in place in your life. 
I don't know why these things happened that happened. I have no idea. But I do know, through all of it, God is trying to teach every one of his children something. He's trying to help us to be more like his son, Jesus Christ. He's trying to teach us to be content. He's trying to teach us to be patient. He's trying to teach us to have joy in struggles. He's trying to teach us to have a proper attitude when these things come. He's trying to teach us how we can then be an encouragement to others. And I believe one of the most important things, he's trying to teach us that, boy, we have a great job to do. And there is a world around us that needs to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And man, if they're afraid of dying, now's the time to tell them, is it not? Go tell somebody. You see, there's a plan in all of these things. God has a purpose in all of these things. So do you believe that you can be content in all things? Do you believe that we can do all things. Look at verse 13. You know this verse well. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. This phrase, I can do, is to have strength, to be strong, to be able. It has a sense to even say to make the statement, I prevail. Paul could bear any trial. He could perform any duty. He could subdue any evil propensity of his nature and meet all the temptation incident to any condition of prosperity or adversity. See, Paul had learned not only that he could be content, but Paul had learned that through God's strength, he could do all things. His own experience and the various changes of life had warranted him in arriving at this very conclusion. And folks, you and I ought to come to this conclusion as well. Through what we go through in our life, through what we endure in our Christian life, through as God, whether they're blessings, whether they're trials, God is teaching us to fully rely on him. And sadly, I feel there's many that have just kind of given up. The greatest relationship you will have is with God. The greatest relationship you will have is having him to be part of your life. Through all of this, Paul then could express this firm confidence that nothing would be required of him which he would not be able to perform. Did you hear that? Paul, in other words, knew that even though he was in prison, even though this was something he would have never chosen for his own life, Paul had such contentment. Paul had a such understanding that he could do all things because he knew that God had placed him there in that time, during that time of life, for a divine purpose. And there was a lot of those. One to be a witness to those in prison. One to be an encouragement to all of these churches he was able to write and to just minister to. And now look at all of these years later. Here we are reading this letter that he wrote from prison and it ought to be encouraging you to be content. It ought to be challenging you to really believe that you can do all things through God's strength. Now this isn't goofy. I'm not telling you to get up on your roof and jump off and see if you can fly. Lance, don't do that. That's not what the Bible's talking about. But it is saying that we ought to have certainty that when God's involved, that when we put him first, we can do all things because he has a plan for you and I. Folks, I want to just encourage you this morning as we look at this point here. Look at what God has done in our church just over this last year. And again, what a year it's been. In the midst of the virus and all the challenges, we actually lost track. And I'm going to try to do a little better job of that next year. We have seen over 20 people come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. Think about that for a minute. 
Have you learned to be content? I looked at Jeff. 20 people on their way to hell, gloriously, born again. Can God do all things? Absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't stop there. We were able to have an effective vacation Bible school. What a great time that was. We had 30, 40 kids running around. It was fantastic. Many of these that we talked about were saved during part of that. We were able to see really three parts of our ministry grow. Junior church grew. Uh, our, our uh, what do I have here? I get back my notes. Our CBC Kids program grew. We were able to reach dozens of children on our bus route, in which in turn we still have those contacts and we're dealing with their families. Even right now, Pastor Jeremy's doing a fantastic job ministering to these people and trying to get them to then, as mom and dads and brothers and sisters come to church as well. We have been able to meet in person and to grow in our faith. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's still some states that don't want churches to meet. There's still some churches that are fighting to even gather together. Folks, we've been able to do this now for 10 months, and look how God has blessed you and I. This ministry, this church, with those that have saved these young people we've seen come in, that's why we need to start the program back up. That's why January 10th is the day, because we want to see more of this in 2021. We want to minister to more, not for number's sake, but for eternity. We've been able to help support many of our missionaries through your giving with special projects in the midst of all we've been going through. We took on Bearing Precious Seed as a new ministry of our church. God has blessed the finances of this church through your faithful giving. Listen, God has blessed us with health and protection through all of this time. Through 10 months of COVID, we had one case in our church. And it's, he's sitting right there. Sorry, Seth. Everybody get your mask out. And praise the Lord, we had a plan. We knew what to do. He recovered very quickly, and we are thankful for that. Brother Seth lost his sense of taste which if you've ever had his cooking, probably isn't, so, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> Recovered quick. One, one person within our walls in 10 months, folks. That's God's protection. We're not being reckless. We're not doing anything we shouldn't do. We have safety precautions in place. We have a plan in place for if someone were to get it and we're in contact with others. We were able to navigate those waters, and not that tomorrow we may not have others. But you know what? God is in that too. But through all of that, through all of this last 9, 10, 11 months, look at that list of what God has done in our church. Has this been a challenging year? Absolutely. There's no, there's no denying that. But when we rely on God, we can do anything through his strength. And that's the principle Paul is teaching when he says, I can do all things. Do you believe that this morning? I am encouraged. I'm looking forward to 2021. I'm excited to see what God will do through our church. Yes, you know, we, we kind of, you have that old catchphrase that we'll be glad when this year is over. But, you know, even as I reflect on that list and I think, you know what? 2020 for our church was a great year. In the midst of all this, God just blessed in a great way. And I'm looking forward to what he is going to do next year as well. I'm looking forward to having more and more of those that are online joining us seeing that we've been able to meet, seeing that this is a place where you can come worship, believing that God is in control and we ought to be worshiping together. It absolutely affects our church. 
I was sharing the other day with the deacons, you know, the Bible gives us an illustration of the church as a body for a reason. You know, right now we are all part of one body. We are all members of one body. And what's so wonderful about that description in Scripture is no body part is more important than another. We all work cohesively. We all work collectively. And this last year has taken some of our body parts. I want to get those body parts back. I want to see them here worshiping with us. I want to see them here serving in the church. And I am encouraged that we will see that happen very, very soon. I truly believe with no hesitation that we as Community Baptist Church can do all things through the Lord's help. You believe that with me? Have you learned to be content? Lastly, do you believe that God supplies every need? Do you really believe that this morning? Look at verses 19 through 20. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This not only speaks of our temporal need, but our spiritual need also. God's provision is above and beyond what we could ever expect And boy, I think if we all sat down, we won't do it for sake of time this morning, but we could go around this room and we would all be able to testify of how God has provided in just some great ways in our family, in your family, in our church family. God is the supplier of everything. With that, if you believe he supplies everything, let me ask you a couple questions. Are you fearful? Are you troubled? Are you discouraged? Are you lacking joy? Go to the one who can meet every need. Not just these temporal needs, but your physical needs as well, your spiritual needs as well. Stop looking within to self and look to the one who can supply all your need. The scripture just doesn't teach this principle here in Philippians. This is throughout the entire Bible over and over again. I'm just going to give you a couple this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You see, God's grace is sufficient, not only in our salvation, but God's grace and goodness is sufficient in our everyday lives. And he just rains those blessings down. He wants us to be just having all sufficiency. He wants us to be filled to the brim. And if you just look at those things, I guarantee you, you will see how filled to the brim you are. Stop looking at what's going on. Look to the one that's the provider of them. In Luke chapter 12, verse 7, just a verse that just caught my eye as I was going through these studies. It says, but even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. We know this scripture. You've heard it many, many times. Fear not, therefore. Did you catch that? For are ye are of more value than many sparrows. I don't think I ever kind of keyed in on that middle part there. Remember, sometimes we use these as catchphrases. We've all said, but even the hairs on your head are all numbered, right? You said that. You know that. Do you see what those next three words are? Fear not, therefore. It says God is in control. If God knows the hairs on your head, if God knows the very just the the very minuscule detail about you and his creation, don't you think he's got things under control? We don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid. You see, when I look at this verse and say, you know what, if God knows every hair on my head, you know what, he surely knew what this year was going to bring. He surely had a plan for this virus. He surely has a plan for this election. He surely has a plan for our next election. All of these things will take place because God has a perfect plan. 
And in the midst of all that, just to narrow the point home, the Bible says, if you can contemplate God numbering every one of your hairs, and the very next phrase is, fear thou not, I think he's in control. I think he's got everything under control. I think he has a perfect plan and will for each and every one of your lives, period. Because that's how great a God he is. Do you believe he will supply every need? You believe those three things this morning? Do you believe you can be content? Do you believe that we can do all things through Christ, through his strength, do you really believe that he is the supplier of every need we have? Let's live like it this next year. Let's live like it. Let's live because we know Jesus Christ is coming back and there is work to do. Let's get involved in our church. Let's get back to really the swing of things. Listen, it's easy to get out of sync, isn't it? It's easy to get out of just the routine. Come back tonight. I, have a, I hope it'll be a good message for you tonight. We're really just going to talk about how we look at the new year and we're going to talk about a clean slate. A clean slate. Be part of that tonight. Get back in the routine of coming Sunday nights. Mr. Jacob Doral is going to be leading our music that night, tonight. This is new to you, I understand, yes. And he is going to do a great job. See what you can do when you're pastor, you know. And his sister is going to sing a special. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> yeah, I saw you laughing. <laughs> but be here. Get back in the loop. Wednesday night, this Wednesday we're off. But boy, next week, 7 o'clock, be here for Bible study, adults. Come back. Let's gather back together. Most importantly, if you're here today, if you're online, I'm going to ask you a most important question. Do you want contentment? I would think anyone would say yes. I would hope anyone would say yes. You're not going to find contentment unless you first know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen again, I'm sorry. I know it gets probably bored hearing me tell you this. It's what Jesus Christ came to do. It's what his birth, his death, his resurrection was all about. It's so that you would receive him, accept him as your savior, and then and only then when you become a child of God, you can have this kind of contentment. That in any circumstance you go through, whether it's a virus, whether it's a disease, whether it's just trials, whether it's financial difficulties, anything that comes your way, you can learn to be content. But it all starts with a personal relationship with Jesus. Come and know him today. Maybe you put it off this last week. Maybe you heard the gospel and you just said, I'm not quite ready. Settle it today. Be ready today. Start this next year out knowing you're a child of God. And then Christian, are you content? Are you trusting that you can do all things through God's strength? Are you certain that God is the supplier of every need? I have said, I will continue to say it over and over again, that God, that the God we serve is the same God yesterday, that he is today, that he will be tomorrow. Our God never changes. He is in control. Nothing surprises him. And he has a plan for each and every one of you in here today. He wants to use you, my friend. Rest in his help. Rest in his strength. Rest in his provision. And learn with me to be content. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much because you first loved us. Lord, we've seen through these last few weeks that very love as we've celebrated the birth of our Savior. Lord, today as we have finished our series out of Philippians, as we have finished this letter of Paul from jail, from prison, Lord, oh, the truths even as we closed out the book today. We ought to be people that are content. As your child, we ought to be able to rest in our faith and our salvation, and that alone should strengthen us in our daily walk with you. God, I pray that we would focus on these things. 
I pray that regardless of the year we've had or even what may be to come in 2021, whether good or bad, Lord, you are still in control. And you have a plan for each and every one of us as you're molding us into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us truly to believe these scriptures. Help us truly to believe that we ought to be content. That we can do all things through your strength. Oh, and God, how you are the supplier of every need we have. You are so very good to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you for the challenge and the encouragement it was to my heart, preparing it, even preaching it this morning. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. As the pianist begins to play, heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. Friend, are you content today? Do you have this peace? Do you have this joy we've talked about? Do you really believe that through anything you can get through by God's strength? In order to know that for sure, you must first be his child. I said that just a moment ago. Maybe you're here today and you'd be honest and say, Pastor Fisher, I have never been saved. I have never put my faith and trust in Christ. I know I'm not content, but I want to be today. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up nice and high? Listen, I will not embarrass you. I will not call you out in front of this group, but I do want to pray for you. But you need to take that first step. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Between you and me and the Lord, I want to be saved. I want to settle this today. If that's you, just slip your hand up nice and high. I'll give it just a minute as I look around. Just slip it up nice and high. I want to be saved today. Anyone like that at all? Christian, are you content? Do you believe these things we've talked about this morning? Maybe they've just been faltering a bit in your mind. Maybe this year has just got you down. Maybe the virus, maybe the elections, maybe just personal trials you've endured doesn't change the fact that God's in control. Doesn't change the fact that God has a plan for you it doesn't change the fact that God is so very, very good. Maybe you're here and you'd be honest and say, you know, God has spoken to my heart this morning. Maybe I haven't been as content as I ought to be. Maybe I'm having trouble really believing that he will supply everything. Maybe I'm having trouble lately just really truly committing to my heart that I can do all things through his strength. And God's spoken to you today. I'd like to pray for you. Anyone like that this morning that say, Pastor, just pray for me. God has challenged my heart when this message today. Just lift up your hand nice and high. I'll give it just a minute. I need to be content. Yes, I see your hand. I need to trust God more with my life. I want to serve him with all that I am. Anyone else? Yes, God is working. Let him be God of your life. Serve him with everything you can. Lord, be with these that raise their hand. Strengthen them, Lord. Help them to be content. Help them to trust in you. Help them to rely on you in all that we go through. And oh God, we are looking for the next year. What a great year 2021 is going to be as we serve you as a church. Just anticipating your goodness to us. Bless her invitation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr.